Eaton. Die aktuelle Acht der Welt heraus. Er ist der erfolgreichste Spieler im deutschsprachigen Raum in der Geschichte der Sportart Darts. Hat zwei European Tour Titel einfahren können und hat auch einen Major Sieg einholen können. Er gewann die Champions League of Darts 2017 aus Wien. The Gentle Mansu Suljovic. What a night it has been, what a night it will continue to be here in Sindelfingen at the European Darts Grand Prix where Mensa Suljevic takes to the stage to take on Steve Beaton. Suljevic hoping to avoid the same fate as the world number two Rob Cross in the opening match of the evening. He lost out to Jeffrey Desvan for the first time. Aaron Webster edged out. Vincent van der Voort and then Daryl Gurney, the world number three, survived. Three match starts from Chris Dobie in three different legs before winning to book his place in the final day of action. There are plenty of reasons to believe that Mensa Sulevic might follow Rob Cross in exiting the tournament at the second round stage and seven of them, in fact eight of them, come from previous meetings between him and the bronze on his Paul Nicholson tell us more well Mensa Sulevic's record against Steve Beaton is rotten to say the least but the upside is that the last time they played Mensa won eight times before that not a bean thank you gentlemen first leg is Mensa to throw first game on so if you were to go on venues I guess then Steve Beaton wins this because this isn't Blackpool. Yes, but Mensa Sullivan hated Blackpool, didn't he? He said it in every interview. However, it was the world match play where Sullivan finally, finally broke the drought against Beaton and he went on to reach the final. So it could be a springboard oh for Sullivan should he get the better of Beaton this evening. And sometimes when you break that streak, that's all you need to just forget about what's happened before but in Blackpool last year I was walking down the promenade myself during the world match play and I saw Mensa dressed in all black in the middle of summer I was just waiting for you to say you saw Mensa riding a donkey or something then pretty close there was a donkey nearby as he was enjoying a local iced refreshment in a cone there with the family but he was very honest about his Opinions of the Vegas of the Northwest. Yeah, hated the hotel, hated the venue, uh, the location. But he did oh, like the venue. 
Now he was playing darts, he liked the stage there, and he almost, almost managed to turn it no, around that marathon final against Gary Anderson. Amazing game. One of the best games that I've ever seen at Blackpool. Steve Beaton doing what Steve Beaton does. Leaves himself on a bogey number. And Sulevich leaves himself on a doable number of 120. There is Team Sulevich. He's going to get a treble there, Steve. So can one of these guys convert a ton plus score to take the first leg? Well, now, 120 is a nice shot for Sulevich, isn't it? Because his darts land pretty flat, so he shouldn't have to worry about barricading himself in. To open the door to the first leg. 80. I said that really well, Chris. It was exactly what I was thinking. A lot of people don't like 120 because of that reason. But 108 is yeah, a number that Steve Beaton Steve adores. Beaton. And he's Say at it again. First. And Mensa Sulevic is singing, oh, not again. Yeah, he must be having a little mental word with himself, Sulevic. Misses a dart for a splendid start Maybe to the match and then beaten mops up the spillage to break throw in leg one now we talked a little bit in the last couple of weeks about how Sudovic has refreshed his kit He's not using the black cover dart anymore he's gone back to the natural tungsten and he's gone to the lighter colored 96 stems and flights not really sure why he's diverted away from the darker coloured stuff because he was very effective with that. But sometimes you need to make a little aesthetic change. Speaking of streaks of eight, which is the winning one that Beaton had against Vincent Sullivan before the match per defeat, he'd be looking to increase his run of qualifying for European Tour events to eight on Friday when he heads to Barnsley for the next round of qualifiers. I Thomas really hope he does it. Zwoller and Copenhagen. You know how much he loves playing in Europe, Steve Beaton. It would be some record, wouldn't it, to go full season qualifying for no, all the it events. Is. It would be something. And a mop of the brow in second leg of the tour, uh, of this match for Sudovic. 58. That's a sign that he's sweating up already. Oh yeah, well it is the second leg of the tournament for Sudovic, isn't it? <laughs> I suppose it is. First appearance, second round, seeded player, and a match that he might have quite liked to have. Dep apart from being defeated by him in Austria, where he never wins, Mentosinovic, he would have or could have been facing James Ryan. 156. Was and Ryan Searle beat Glenn Durrant in round one, awaits the winner of this. 60. Can Sudovic convert Uruguay, something under 100 this time? And he's got lots of choices here. He may even think of treble 14, double 14. There's nothing wrong with that. Because if he gets the single, loads of options. Now it's 16. Now it's tops. Hits tops. Well, he misses and beaten hits. Steve That's what happened. Happened in leg one. Salt in the wound shot. Double nine. Seven. It hasn't happened this time, and Sulevich will return. Tell you what, Chris, in that position when you've got the 60 as well, you are livid that you haven't taken the double 18. Well, Mensa wasn't watching. He was just waiting for Kirk Bevins to call game shots. Will he call it now? That was a little bit twitchy. No score. A bit more than usual. 18. He expects Steve to just clean this up, and he does. Yeah, Pass the salt. Beaten. It's in the wound, so and it's a first. little bit more salty than it was because Mensa's missed a stack of chances, and got a feel. Maybe Mensa doesn't know this. That the winner of this one gets Ryan Searle, who is probably the luckiest man in single thing in this weekend. No, but he would love to play Ryan Searle and try and get revenge for the worlds. Because it was Ryan Searle who took out Sulevich at Ali Pali. And ever since then, Mensa Sulevich has not worn 
that new shirt of his. He's gone back to the old faithfuls. It says to me that Mensa Sudovic is fairly superstitious. It is quite a remarkable record, isn't it, that Steve Beaton has got against Sudovic. If you take it as a percentage for any player that he's played no, more you know than I three mean. times, he hasn't got a worse record against anyone. Including Phil Taylor, including Michael Van Gerwen. Beaton has the beating I of the gentle. I am not surprised by that. I've played Steve many times, and he is just amazingly hard to beat. But so much in the way of resilience. 96. Mid match, he can get you early, he can put you under so much pressure. And all the while, he doesn't give you any vocalization, any celebrations. He doesn't show you anything. I would hate to play cards against him. Yes, you have played him many times, Paul, and he has beaten you many times, but you've got your fair share. Got a few chalk marks. 11 7 in Steve's favour. No, it's just a, a privilege to play him 18 times. A record that Mensa Sulevic. The world number eight could only dream of. 60. Messi Uruguay, 83. Well, trouble 17. He's taking his time tonight, is Mensur. He's been rubbing that chalk on his dart hand quite a lot. He has been doing that the last three weeks. 66 left, Mensur, so. 14s, no. maybe? Yeah, no need to think about the ball at the end of this combination because Beaton can't want. finish, although Mensa will be thinking that somehow he'll find a way. Well, he hasn't left tops. That's a good start. 100. Mensa Uruguay, 30. Sure he's not going to miss this. A bit more chalk on the fingertips. Almost every visit he's done that in this match. Yeah, it's been a sign of the last month. Extra perspiration, extra pressure. Extra twitching of the yeah, finger and it worked that time. Clearly not happy with the way he's playing. And the way he usually plays, you've probably got to agree. Doesn't average 88 very often. 140. And there you have it. The first nine from Sudovic is usually up towards 115. And it's a very even contest statistically. But from a mental point of view, you've Got to give it a beaten so far because he's taken enough chances. But well, we are on course to end up with a, a last 16 with half and half in terms of seeds and qualifiers. 134. Beaten wins here. It would make it six of each through so far. And I mean, if you look at the rest of the lineup, Adrian Lewis against Jamie Hughes, Max Hopp against Nathan Aspinall. Aspinall is the unseeded player in that match. Van Gerwen against Dolan, who beat him in Copenhagen last year. And then Peter Wright against Neil Zonnevelt. There are opportunities for qualifiers to come through. Sulevic is not writing himself up just yet. 81. No, he's not. There's something else that Steve Beaton's done in this building that Mensa Sulevic has never done, and that's win the tournament. His one European Tour title came in this building. And that was the German Darts Masters in 2013. Beat Mervyn King, King who we saw lose a quite incredible match this afternoon against James Steve Richardson, who produced his best ever display. Well, that fat one from Mensa Sudovic at the end of that visit 94. has gifted six darts to Steve Beaton, in which he has just plucked out one big treble, and he's ambling back to this, the back of the stage where he will have a little think We'll come back for 20 and double 16. And based on statistics in this 64. match, he Steve will get it 52. with his second dart. It'll have to be double eight. And he doesn't get either. Sudovic is going to be beaten in this match. I feel he's going to have to take this and he's going to have to show some spirit. He's going to have to show some excitement and maybe upset the aura around beaten. Down for 57. 
But he can't find it, so oh, the no boy. taking of the out Stevie shot. Boy, 16. And no reason for spirit or celebration. Gage on the fourth leg, Steve Beaton. Reason for sorrow, though. Mid leg is Mensa to throw Steve Beaton is just Game on. irking away at him right now. And has the spirit of Sulevic been dented by Thursday night against Rob Cross? He was drubbed a little bit by Voltage, who was fabulous. But Mensa Sulevic's what chance of making your two was very much up in the air, in the wind. And he's got to play MVJ on Thursday, so you've got to think maybe that's that. 140. Steve Beaton's actually having a fantastic season, isn't he? We've mentioned those qualifiers. He's on course this year to make it to a 19th consecutive world match play. Now, put that in, into perspective with other players, some of which have not actually been there yet. 140. Steve Beaton is a Hall of Famer walking among us. And we shouldn't take that for granted, Chris. I think we should enjoy him while he's here. I think he's going to be around for a, a while yet. But you can never take life for granted. You should enjoy greatness when it's around. I, for one, am very looking forward to the book that he writes when he's finished that will be full of some good stories well, plenty of time for him to 60. pin some trebles and doubles before 81. putting pen to paper Tulevich has once again returned to the table for some more chalk on the fingertips but he really needs to start chalking up the legs so look at the 25 yeah 16 for tops he doesn't even like tops Does yeah, now. I don't understand why he doesn't like Steve tops. Game on. Considering the best finish he's ever done in his career was on tops. That 160 against Rima van Barneveld in the Champions League. I remember being in Cardiff when he hit that, thinking, what had I just witnessed? One of the best legs of darts ever seen. To chip a 160 out when Barneveld has left a double after nine. That is Herculean. Well, we know that Sulevic has the game to turn it around, but he is against an opponent who he just can't seem to get the beating, or certainly in the shorter the format matches. Small signs of frustration from Steve. Started the leg well, but hands an opportunity for Sulevic to get back in the match with no trouble in that visit. He has been taken to the end on his way to this point in the tournament. It was in qualifying against Dave Pallet. That was 6-5. But the other two games he played, he won 6-2 and 6-4. It was a bit more comfortable. But he was excellent against Stephen Bunting yesterday. 95. Even though we talk about Steve Beaton's ability to leave bogey numbers, he was doing the right thing there from 3-0-3. Nobody should be going to 20s on 3 or 3 and if they do I'm going to tell them to their face that they're wrong well I'm going to make a note and then we will set that up 100 take our smartphones you're going to throw me to the wolves it'll be like Liverpool being thrown the wolves well I'm not sure what Beaton's just thrown there but it's by far his worst visit and it has opened the door He's not getting in a rhythm in this game, is he, Steve? He should know, after all that success against Sudovic previously, he's just having to take his time to get to the hockey. That's what makes the record more remarkable, because Beaton is a rhythm player. And what, one thing that Mensa Sudovic is very Forty. good at on the stage, apart from throwing the darts at the targets, is disrupting the rhythm of his opponents. 58. This game's just got scrappy all of a sudden. Uruguay, 164. Could be sparked back into life in a flash. Steve Beaton could be in the wind right now, make no mistake. But he's having a little exhalation at the back of the stage there, just trying to gather himself, and he might not get another dart in this leg. A spark. 
no fireworks from the Austrian, but Beaton no, has one of those champagne shots. Steve in front of him. Go on, Steve, pop the cork. 25. Oh, that's cruel. Give it him back. Come on. Mulligan. I'm calling for a mulligan. Yeah, deflected. Away 71. from the green. And Uruguay, 71. And now Mensa Sulevich has the chance to break the throw. Where is he going? Went for 51. Now he's going to have to go 18 bull. Double seven. Wasn't good to Rob Cross earlier. He's checking with the ref. Well, he's about to throw when he checked. He's one of the best counters in world darts. 64. It's not been very kind Steve to Sudovic either 54. as he wafts that one away. He's been full of personality tonight, that's for sure. And a missed big number from Steve Beaton. 45, 13 needed. Or a big five for tops. 34. Well, well this is... Menzi require seven. What a Army weird old leg. leg this has been. Yeah, by far the worst of the match. And Solovic can try and clean up seven to tie it up at three apiece and effectively take control of the yeah, contest. Well, well like beating at the back of the first. stage there, giving it the full-on pob. You know, puffing those cheeks out. He's got every right to do that. Game on said earlier in that leg Murph that Beaton should be in the wind well someone's got the old fishing rod out and reeled him back towards themselves it's what a bizarre game yeah, it has scrapped but it has been 96. A, a scrappy affair hasn't it there you see both players averaging sub 90 108. and then Beaton turns it on all of a sudden I want to know how he gets that second dart in there because there is about as much room under that first dart. It's about the width of a Nat's kneecap. Just pure, unadulterated ability. Absolutely incredible. I was waiting for a bizarre comparison and you did not let me down. I think well, Beaton lets us down with dart day. four. A man who's had a nine on the Euro Tour this year. Solovic, a man who's had one hit against him. Game face back on for Steve Beaton. Didn't seem to be much comfort with the dart in the hand of Sudovic in this match. There's a lot of the finger twitching going on. He's, he's not in any sort of rhythm. 99. That's good enough from Beaton. Good leave. I like the switch there, take it away from 81, because now it forces him to go bull, 25-17 for tops. Ask most start players, they'd much rather be on 82 than 81. Does Mensa look at the bull here? No, he oh, stayed no, there and piled it into the treble. 82. Another one of them will do. Yeah, 16 for the button. See both players here seem a little bit frazzled. Double nine. Sixty-four. Scrappy darts at times that getting the match wrong. Eighty-five. To check with the calculator, which is the right thing to do, of course, if you're not quite sure. But yeah. kind of as just everything about this game is, it's a scrap, isn't it? It's a battle. Yeah. Treble nineteen. Will he get a single or a treble 16? He gets the treble. Double nine off. Seven. Well, neither can hit. Take a nine Steve off. Uruguay, 18. Guide. Hit. Game shot on the seventh leg. Really, Steve really good it. from Beaton. Eight and I was going to say that first, first effort at double nine in the previous visit. Game on. He confirmed with Kirk. Yes, it's 18 left. And he threw it away so fast as if to say well all right I'll just get rid of that then well he started the last leg with a maximum oh, 139 a solid start on throw Solovic has work to do again and he might find himself with work to do on Thursday night Paul he is one of the men in 
a playoff spot right now, but he faces Michael van Gerwen, who is trying to dislodge Rob Cross from top spot in the Premier League. I don't think Sulevich qualifies. I, pit I pitched for it about three weeks ago. Well, give, us your, give us your, well, your two from the remaining four that are going to make it. Well, I think, I think Cross will win the league. I think Michael van Gerwen will beat Sulevich. I think James Wade qualifies. And I have already said about three weeks ago what I thought was going to happen. I'm not going to change my mind. I'm going to say that Gerwin Price is going to qualify. 140. Well, that would take Kearney to drop points against Michael Smith because, of course, Rob Cross is facing James Wade. And Gerwin Price to do his job in beating Peter Wright. Price was very, very good this afternoon against Gavin Carney, it has to be said. Yeah, he looked full of beans. Yeah, the best we've seen so far of those Premier League All protagonists. Hundreds. Steve Ugo, 101. Steve looking at nine. And double 16. Uh, 85. Now, this this number. 121. So many times professionals leave themselves on this and they all fancy it. Fifty one. Bull. For four four. Yeah, Listen to that. Big exhalation from the Austrian and everybody's involved. Right, We'd say the pros love it. First. Still gonna execute the plan. And Beaton looks really knocked. Well in amongst the scrap, Sullivan chairs on earth a gem with that one two one check out on the ball. You put, me, you put me on the spot with the Premier League stuff, then I'll, I'll put you on the spot about something. No, I just asked the questions, Paul. Don't oh. expect me to answer them. Well, I'm going to make you answer one. Okay. 134. Is Steve Beaton the best player never to have played in the Premier League? Well, present company accepts well, it, obviously, Paul. It's a tough one, isn't it? Because there are some very, very talented players, I guess. He's, he's never really been part of the conversation. Maybe back in 2009 when he made the final of the European Championship that you know, he would have been considered. Yeah, I guess Ian White would probably stake a claim for that title. Why don't you guys out there in the Twitter sphere let us know. 96. Are you still the only one to have won a major and not made it into the Premier League? Correct, because Nathan Aspinall has played in the Premier League now. So I'm still got that little flag waving in the air. So yes, of course I could have made a fool of myself there and picked <laughs> one of the contenders. That was a trap you set that I didn't fall into. Ah, for. you see, too smart. Well, Anybody out there wants to get in touch about the best player never to have played Premier League? Obviously, don't include the guys from the previous generation before the Premier League was around. You say too smart. It's better to be lucky than smart, I find. It's better to be good and lucky. Well, one hundred and sixty-seven has been smart and good in the last few minutes in this match at least. He's not going to have to take out 167, but he has put himself in pole position. If Steve Beaton loses this game, he's going to wonder how. Because he has been in charge most of the way, and Sulevich has just scrapped his way into this position. Good job, you check your score there, Steve. Wow, great setup. But it may be in vain. Well, double 18 for Mensa Sulevic to lead this darts match for the very first time. Top left. Yeah, he's on the night leg. Mensa Sulevic. Ten to get Steve to throw first. Paul Nicholson knew. I think Steve Beaton knew as well. Sulevic is happy now, but he might not be when he hears. 125. 125 called by Kirk Bevans, but if he'd seen the first two darts, he'd be quite pleased. And it's not a bad start when you need to win the next two legs. It's not about survival here for Steve, it's about trying to win this match. Well, is it an argument that Mensa threw that dart, Paul? I've seen players drop darts, but not them land underneath the board. Yeah, it wasn't an overhand motion, so... 
Oh, the foul the dot. Made several apologies as he retrieved his darts there. You notice Mensa doing oh, his he's flicking of the forearm to the right. He's been doing that for the last couple of weeks. Trying to get rid of the excess perspiration potentially or extra chalk residue. Well, judging by the perspiration on the stage, I think he's been through more chalk on his hand than a very clever Princeton professor teaching very complicated physics. 140. Do they use chalk these days? Probably not. 134. Oh. Spencer certainly does. He could do with a, a sponsorship deal, couldn't he? He was the market leader in chalk. Ask Keith Della. He went through plenty of it. He used to imprint the chalk on the board. He used to change the colour of the 60 to a white treble. Well, Sulevich has changed the complexion of this match. 140. The 140 leads. Guess what? The 1-2-1 one, one that did change everything. Does it end everything? That's the question. 105. Great lead from Beaton. 121. 121, take two. And if he gets another 1-2-1, one, one, that will be a wrap. Beaton waiting on a double, just like he was in the last leg. Sulevich pinned the ball to make it four apiece. 96. But he almost threw Three himself. 40. With that dart, only found the green bits, and now Beaton needs double ten, and now double five, yeah, and he finds it legs, to force a last leg yeah, decider. Leg is Mensa to throw first. Game on. I don't know about you, Murph, but I wasn't feeling very good on that double five for Beaton because he thought that double ten was in, and he had to reset himself. He had every opportunity to stand back, but Steve Beaton doesn't stand back. He just gets on with it. It's been weird at times. It's 96. been brilliant at times. But the most important thing is that we've had times. Well, twice before, matches between this pair have gone down to last leg shootouts, and Steve Beaton has won them both. Cast your mind back to last year when Steve Beaton had a couple of rippers against Kim Ibrex, two of my favourite games of last year, and Beaton won them both. If you haven't seen those games yet, 57. find them. They've they were dramatic. They've actually upped it a lot in the last four legs, haven't they? If you just look at the numbers there. 100. Yeah, 14, 12, 14, 15. That's very healthy. And what was a, a scrappy game of darts, apart from that 12 darter in leg five from Sulevich, is going to end up being a decent one when you look at the statistics at the end of it. Sulevich averaging in the high 90s, beaten not too far behind. 140. Well, I've always said when you're watching a game like this and it's really, really tight going to the, the last furlong, you're no, surviving on a diet of fingernails. Well, it is very, very tight. Three points in it after nine darts have been chucked from each player. Players are feeling it too. Beaten, waiting, impatiently. Is he up to his old tricks here? I think he's nervous. Mensa. Yeah, I really do. Doesn't want to throw. Well, the crowd want him to throw. They don't want him to go. 100. Is 100 I, thought enough? A, I thought that was a 140. Is 100 enough? Is 100 enough? 126. Well, this is perfectly poised, Paul. You call it. 108 and throwing and 79 and waiting. 60, 20, 28. Has to be. If he goes above the 60 here, I'll be, f I'll be astounded. Oh, where does he go? Where does he go? Surely the 48's the shot there. The treble 16 was open, and now beaten. The treble 19's a smart 16. shot for Steve. Steve Uruguay, 79. He finds it. Double 11. One dart left. 57. And beaten has missed a couple of match darts. Uruguay, to clean 48. up 22. 
and Sulevic will return. 20 for double 14. I have never seen Steve Beaton so annoyed. 2,000 people say Mensua. Double 14 says. Double seven. Our service says. <laughs> Stevie Maguire, 22. Well, Fortune may have favoured Steve Beaton. Who missed a couple of darts himself in this dramatic decider. Make that three. But he does not miss anymore. And Sulevic just can't seem to beat this man in these races to six. It's another win for Steve Beaton's brilliant, brilliant record. And another seed is sent packing here in Sindelfing. And Mensa Sulevic, the world number eight, follows the world number two, Rob Cross, out of the European Darts Grand Prix. Adrian Lewis and Jamie Hughes coming next here. Michael Van Gerwen also still to come tonight. Mentor Sulevic. Und damit scheidet die Nummer 8 der Welt aus, der zweite Top 10 Spieler an diesem Samstagabend. Applaus für Mensur. Steve, congratulations. That was a quite long match, my goodness. Is it difficult to keep the concentration going? Well, yeah, yeah well, yeah. Well, <laughs> everything's longer now for me, but um, no, I mean, Mensur, I, I, th I thought that was a, a very competitive game. Back and forth, and uh, I thought I blew it with the two 11s, but he, he let me in again. So, you know. Perhaps it's typical for, for your situation right now. Yesterday we said top 20 again, you're playing well, and then sometimes you're winning matches like that. You know, it's, uh, you, you, you got the luck on your side. I, I'm playing well. It's just I, uh, sometimes I slip up and, and I miss a double. And uh, at the stage we are now with all the averages, if you miss one double, you're out. And uh, Fortunate for me, I missed the double, and he missed. So, you know, just the way it goes. But uh, I, th I thought the crowd were very good. I mean, they were cheering Menzo, but uh, they didn't put me off at all. They were brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much, Steve. See you tomorrow. Steve Beaton! Bedankt sich auch nochmal bei euch. Ihm war schon klar, dass